to another episode of the Local Nomads Podcast. We're Gabby and Adam, and I don't know what number episode this is, but... It doesn't really matter, does it? It doesn't. It doesn't matter. It's been a while since we've recorded a new episode, but we're back today. We're excited. We're doing something we've never done before on the podcast. We're having our very first guest. So, and, and we're recording video for the first oh yeah, time. And we have a video for the first time. Very good. So our guest today is Taryn from uh, No Matter How Far. But he's actually from some, a place. Where are you from? England. England. The land of England. <laughs> so let's start off by talking about how we all first met. So Gabby and I were in Bangkok. Bangkok. What year was this? Do you, do you remember what year it was? 2017? I think it was 2017. Yeah. yeah, 2017. And we were in Bangkok on a trip and we happened to get in contact with you. Tell us, tell us what happened. We were staying down the road. We were in, yeah, in, in different hostels down, down the street from each other. And then we, we met up and went for, went out to eat. Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. And have some food at a vegan restaurant. That's right. Vegetarian. Yeah, yeah. it was like a vegetarian vegan restaurant. Are you vegan? Yeah. Are you vegan or yeah. vegetarian? Vegetarian. The food looks too realistic to me. Oh, that okay. I don't know if you remember or not. It was like it just looked like meat perfectly. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, <laughs> they do really good things with the fake meat over there. Yeah, it's like it it actually mm. looks and it tastes like meat. <laughs> Yeah. So the thing is, you've been vegetarian your whole life, right? Yeah, I think uh, like five years old. Since you were five life. years old, and so how yeah. did that? How did that happen? Um, well, my dad and my brother both eat meat, but my mum has been vegetarian for a long time. But I think I remember just not liking it in general. Yeah, my mum was like, "You need to eat some fish and some meat when you're younger." It's good for you. Just in your brain, I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but eventually I cut it out completely. So she tried to get you to eat it, but you didn't like it, and she still yeah, she like it. Oh, omega three, you need omega three. It's just in your brain. It's just fish. Wow. <laughs> but, wow. Yeah. So, so, uh, what is so? Even the fake meat in Viet or in Thailand was like it's too close to real meat. Some of the stuff, yeah, like that, that stuff that you get. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know what they make it out of. Like uh, soy or, I don't know. Like, I don't, some of the, I've had like potato bacon and that has been some of the best like fake meat I've had. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how they did it, but they did it. They do amazing, especially in Vietnam too. They have a lot of those Buddhist restaurants where they make all kinds of vegetarian and vegan food. And those fake meats are just incredible. I don't even understand. (laughs) But I think, I guess that's how we would differ, right? Because of course we would love the fake meat and you being vegetarian is like kind of turned off by it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I guess that's how it goes. So when we were in all in Bangkok together, oh yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, I'm living with other people in the house. Oh, no worries, man. One of the cool things that you did while we were in, in uh, Thailand was you went and explored that abandoned building, right? You I t- was I about to do that. I, you were about to go and do that. So what happened? Yeah. Did you did you end up getting into that place? I never managed to get in there. Yeah. Which what was the name of it? Uh, the IC IC Ah, uh, yeah, that's right, that's right. And it's Four this stars. crazy, spooky, huge tower in the middle of Bangkok, right? Yeah. But, but you do that. Have a, you do that a lot, don't you? Go to different kinds of abandoned places. I, think. <laughs> I found a really nice one um, last year, 2018, I went to Thailand, yeah, down in uh, Rayong. Rayong. In Thailand? Yeah, yeah. No, we haven't. Like, 
down along the coast, but the opposite way from where everyone normally goes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know if you saw any of the video that I posted or anything, but it's like, it's a place where there would be no tourists at all. The two weeks I was there, I, I think I saw one, one backpacker maybe. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, but <laughs> it's, it's really interesting place. We had like abandoned uh, plane, which I, I think we could that was pretty really interesting. And yeah, really cool abandoned building. You say an there. abandoned plane? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Did you go inside of it? No, it, apparently it used to be open, but now they've got fence around it and people start trying to Oh, wow. Did you ever go but, to that abandoned plane graveyard in Bangkok? No, because I heard it was just like one of the normal things to do. Yeah, same here. Same here. We never and made it. to get in there and stuff and pay for everything. It doesn't sound like it. It sounds just like a normal story. Yeah. So, one of the things that Taryn does is he does uh, YouTube videos. So you, I thought I saw a video where you flew your drone off the roof of, uh, was it a, a hotel or like an ab abandoned hotel? It, what, I feel like it was an abandoned hotel. Oh, no, 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 no. It was that hotel in Thailand where you went to and it was like there was just nobody there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that was the same place. <laughs> Yeah, but although while I was flying it, I, um, I think there must have been a lot of birds nesting in the abandoned building because it started getting attacked. And in, in one of the clips, you can actually see the birds circling it. Circling around your drone or just circling around the building? Around the drone. Wow. What kind of birds were they? Um, like big or like, because I don't remember that part. I remember uh, They'd probably be able to take out the drone. Wow. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about that. So how long have you had your drone for? Because I've been wanting to get one for a long time. I've been having horrible misfortunes with it. But you, you get I never ended up getting my... Yeah, I have a little, baby, I have yeah. a little tiny baby one, and it's fun to fly around, but it's, it's, it's not satisfying. <laughs> Good but for um, learning, maybe. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's good for learning the controls and stuff like that, but it's not like what I really want, you know? And the first time we flew it, you flew it straight into the street. That doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> At least you put the, for, for the baby one, the baby one is not good for flying outside. It's good for flying indoors in a controlled environment. With no wind. Yeah, no wind. <laughs> there's any wind. Yeah, I, you want. I got mine in Japan. Um, Last year, we found quite fun. Yeah, it was last year. <laughs> yeah, it was really about the nineteen hundred years. Yeah, I got it while I was on top of a mountain in Hokkaido. That's right. Uh, you worked at you worked at a resort in Japan. Right? Was it a re was a resort, right? Yeah, the hiking resort. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you bought so, the drone while you were living up there. I, I met someone who had a um, Mavic, the normal Mavic, and um, they actually let me have a go on it. And I was like, oh, someone's let me have a go on their drone. Yeah. So I it. <laughs> and so I flew it around for about 10 minutes and went, yeah, okay, I'm going to have to get one more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for a while, so then that's it. And so I. I Which one did you get? Uh, Mavic Air. Air. So, oh. Yeah, it's just a talent. It's all got really tiny and The entire <coughs> and batteries and controller and everything. That's, That's pretty good. very compact. How many batteries do you have for it? Uh, three. Three. Okay. Has it changed the way you like have to travel? Or like, do you have any problems with borders or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I've heard uh, lots of people have said they couldn't take their drone on the actual plane. It had to be in the uh, drone luggage. But 
One guy said that he wasn't allowed to take his drone in the plane because someone had uh, taken off their drone in the plane midair. And I was like, what? what? Uh, that's why that's why the Sony was always on drone because no one wants to take it. Who does Stupid that? Stupid people are ruining things for the rest of us. Taking <laughs> <laughs> off a drone inside a plane mid-flight. There's not even any room inside the pattern. Do you think anybody my, think somebody actually did that? Or do you think that yeah. somebody made that story up? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe it's a presentation. But that, if that's true, it's a great idea. So yeah, I haven't heard of it. You take it in your carry on luggage? Yeah. Okay. Even yeah. the bat. What about the batteries and stuff? Do those go into carry on too? Yeah, yeah. You're not allowed to take the batteries and the service. Okay. Very cool. So, okay, so <laughs> speaking of luggage, like how much stuff do you travel with? We haven't wait, really wait, talked. Wait. I had another question yeah, yeah, about the ahead. drone. Okay, um, has it changed the way you pick places to go to because of the way that you're shooting differently now mm -hmm. for your videos? Yes, actually, yeah, when we were in Vietnam, I, a lot of the time, I was kind of looking around and saying, to fly the drone there, you want to fly the drone there, let's go to that place. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's kind of bad in the world. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I haven't actually, since I've been in New Zealand, so two months now, I haven't flown it maybe once. Okay. But quite nice just enjoying that land again. But, How are the um, restrictions there in New Zealand for drone flight? A lot, I think. Okay. There's, um, unfortunately, where we're living right now, there's an airport just down the road, so even on the drone, it's quite good actually, it stops the it's flying, you, you can't even take it off, it goes, you might have to press mm -hmm. the button. So, yeah. I see. So yeah, <laughs> so it won't even let you take off. So you have Literally to be, restricted. do you know how far away you have to be from like an airport? I Five kilometers. Am okay. I going to get my <laughs> So I suppose even if you were, even if you took off from five kilometers up and then you flew into that zone, it would probably oh, shut no, the road down. Right? It's like geo fence. Okay. Weird. It won't even fly into it. Huh. Uh, it, it stops mid uh, and be like, yeah, uh, <laughs> It's That's like a crazy. it's like a space force field, like in space yeah. when they're like <laughs> <laughs> bubble. Be bubble yeah. yeah. Not coming in here. Okay. So but what were the restrictions like in Japan? Was it different there? Um, well, you didn't actually see many restrictions. Apparently you're not allowed to fly anywhere near Tokyo. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I snuck up to um, a rooftop right next to Tokyo Tower and took off from the rooftop at night to film the Tokyo Tower. Uh, how, were, did you get pretty good shots at night? How did the, how did the images look at night? It's too bad. It's, it's okay if you turn the, uh, the ISO right down because it obviously tries to get in as much light as possible. Yeah, maybe you guys should talk more about the Mavic Air. And well, yeah, the thing is, I'm trying to decide now if I'm going to go for the Mavic Air or the Mavic Mini, the newer one that's a little smaller. But I still, I'm leaning towards the Air right now. What, what do you want to do with the video? Is it short video at all? Or? Well, no, mostly just for my own uh, travel videos and stuff. At least, and the other and thing is, I want, I do, I don't, it, Neither the Air or the Mini is the drone that I want. The drone that I want is the Mavic 2 Zoom. Um, but I feel like I'm not ready to just like dive in head first for a $1,500 drone. I'd rather like learn how to use one first with something that's like a little more uh, manageable in terms of price. Yeah, it's just like buying a camera. Right. The people who go, I want to be a photographer. Okay, $2,000, there, I'm a photographer. Yeah, right, exactly. It doesn't work that bad. Right. Yeah. yeah, like, and if we break a $400 drone, it's a little bit easier to swallow than breaking a $1,500 one. 
I've already been you're, you're, the loss of a fifteen hundred dollar one. I I got my money back, but still, what happened? I don't know if I ever told you. What happened was I tried to order it down to Mexico from oh, yeah, no, American I Amazon. Yeah, and then the Mexican customs just shut it down on me. You got the money back. Yeah. I did get the money back eventually, but Amazon said that it was able to ship to Mexico. That's why I thought it would be okay. But it was Amazon. They didn't provide the correct documentation for customs. So that they sent it back, but it was it was about a month that my my money was just hanging out and in, in the east. Which one did you go for? What was that? Which one did you go for? It was the Mavic Two Zoom. So now I'm like I took some time to really think about my decisions. Second time. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna make the right decision the second time around. I mean that the new one, the the really small one, yeah. would be pretty good if you were just doing like. Uh, videos for your, your travel videos, right. I think, because there's no restrictions. You don't have to register as a pilot. And there's a lot of stuff in America that you have to yeah. pull on. So I'm, I'm, I don't know if you, if you guys use Android or, or iPhone. I don't know. Um, I, maybe you can talk about this on the podcast. I'm not sure, but there's a secret. If you, um, if you down, if you, Go into the options. You know, on Android, you can open the developer option. Mm -hmm. um, if you download a fake GPS app, you can tell your phone. For me, my Mavic thinks it's in America. Uh -huh. And in America, they use a different um, channel. Uh -huh. So it's much better signal. Whereas when I was in Japan, they use smaller bandwidth. Mm -hmm. You're only allowed to. And so I tricked it into thinking it was in America. And then I managed to, like, when I was flying in the city, I saw the difference. Like, it was like day and night. But I was flying it about, I could still see it about 15 meters away, and the signal was horrendous. I was like, oh, I can't even see what I'm filming. It's so bad. Then I switched over, and it was just perfect, flying really far away. Wow. wow. I kept it like that since. But it's <laughs> not loud, but it's, it's a good hack. That's pretty cool. Drone secret menu. At first, I was I was worried. I thought, wait, if I press the turn to things, we're just going to start flying to America. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how far I would make it. <laughs> like, where does it? Where so, does it do, end you, up? do you lose your ability to use the GPS if you're doing that? Huh. It's, um, the the drone still knows where it is because it's got its own GPS. <gasps> um, Everything's fine. <laughs> Dogs knocked over a lamp. All good, all good. Yeah, the thing is, yeah. it's just the um when you start it up the program, your phone kind of thinks it's an America, so it says, uh, "Do you want to change back to the normal settings because you're not in America anymore?" And I say, "I'll keep on doing it." Huh? That's cool. great. That's so great. Yeah. Wow. Well, I have yeah, a lot to I think, think about before I make this drone buy. It's so. It, I feel like I was so hasty with the other one just because I wanted it so bad and was ready for it. But now I that was feel like, like instant it's a, karma. I feel like it's a much bigger decision than I had originally. And the weight and space of the bigger one. I don't know how much how you travel normally. Yeah. Guys, but we have suitcases with the bank. now. We just changed from backpacks to suitcases. Mm -hmm. Can you send me the picture of the guy with the huge backpack? <laughs> <laughs> It's like the size of a car on his back. <laughs> yeah, no, we're we've we've left our backpacks back in New York, moved everything into small suitcases, and now we just have like one small backpack each, and then a so, small suitcase. So your your suitcases, you're not backpacking. It's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We didn't. We never really identified <laughs> ourselves as backpackers anyway, because we travel so differently from backpackers. I feel like that's why we need. Needed suitcases, suitcases <laughs> because backpacker, backpacks are great if you're just picking your stuff up and moving with it every day. But we yeah, just yeah. spend like a few months at a time in places. So still feel so attached to my backpack, even though, yeah, as you say, it normally gets used once every, for me, like at, at the moment, it's once every month or something, or to move to a new place. I haven't used it in months now. And, yeah. Yeah. The bonus of the suitcase is that it operates like a like a dresser, right? You just open it up, and then all your clothes are laid out in front of you. 
Whereas the, with the backpack, you have to like dig pull and pull out. stuff out. And that makes a it really is, big difference for me. It was my place are in there. Okay, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. We got something like that going on. That's all of your clothes. Pants, shirts, underwear, the whole... Wow. That's incredible. <laughs> that's I, had to, when, I mean, when I got the drone, I had to cut down on a few items. I was like, okay, I don't need two pairs of trousers. I don't need... I don't need a hoodie. It's going to be warm in New Zealand. <laughs> I'm impressed. I feel like we travel with with a small amount, but I feel like you probably have even less than us. I think so. Yeah. Definitely more, yeah. less than me. Yeah, Gabby has a slightly larger suitcase. I have a really hard mine, time. Yeah. We'll forgive you. <laughs> Girls always have to have more. I don't know. Sure. Instead of two pairs of shoes, she has four pairs of shoes, and it makes a big difference. But you also had a suitcase and she was going to use that, and I was like, no, the backpack is I will not be seen with you and a suitcase. Wow. <laughs> so you had to buy you had to buy a backpack and a lot of clothes had to go so I could fit that on the back. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big change. But now we're yeah, now we're in a stable place. We haven't used our bag in a while. So every now and then so I just bought a new dress. Yeah. Sit in the bag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's where we're at every time. It's like, I hope you can get that thing to close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's different the way that you, the way you think about your stuff when you have to travel with it all the time, because you can't just buy new things and, you know, throw it in the closet. Mm -hmm. Eventually you have I'm to. Still, I'm at that stage now where I've got a little um, a needle and thread and I'm repairing the clothes. Yeah. Just those looking like, like, that doesn't happen in Japan. Everyone just buys new stuff all the time. Uh-huh. <laughs> Our world well, has sure changed a bit just depending on like where we live. Like before when we were living in Asia, we we did a lot of like shorts and t-shirts and stuff. Mm -hmm. In Mexico, we dress a little bit differently just because like the the Mexican culture is they dress like really, really, really nice. They don't wear like shorts and t-shirts you look like such a tourist if you're walking around in that so like we ended up getting slightly more professional clothes for mexico mm -hmm. but it's pictures on your instagram and your dresses maybe yeah yeah it's yeah. changed a little bit but we we get like stuff that lasts a long time yeah so it's good and we're getting used to wearing pants in the heat that's i think the other hard part it's yeah. just like they're yeah, they like to wear pants in Mexico, and so we do it. I mean, at first it was really hard, and, and we didn't want to be outside in like the 90, 100 degree weather. Well, yeah, like or like high 30s weather, and low 40s in in short and pants. But we got used to it. So you just switch from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, can go, I can go back and forth. Most Americans can't do it. <laughs> I feel for a second when you said we're getting used to wearing pants. I was like. Don't wear pants. Yeah. <laughs> no, right, oh, right. Yeah. So yeah, it gets up to in the low forties here, so it can be quite hot. But yeah. you still have to wear pants, or else nobody will respect you. As an English person, every time I pants, I trousers. Sorry, trousers. <laughs> 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 that's right, that's right. I, can switch it, I can switch over to celsius but i can't change from pants to trousers i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> right now right now we're house sitting and dog sitting for some friends of ours in mexico so we have this whole beautiful house but it also comes with two dogs and they bark sometimes <laughs> yeah and sometimes but they're mostly they fun yeah <laughs> So, okay, so let's talk about the, your traveling style, which is one of the main reasons we wanted to talk to you. And what we really like about what you do is the way that you travel differently, which is that you tend to work different jobs wherever you go, right? Yeah, yeah, I've been doing a lot of different jobs in the last few years. And so you, you, you get working holiday visas mostly, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So can you explain that process a little bit, the working holiday visa thing? Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's hard. Um, the one I've got for New Zealand and Australia, that's very simple. Just apply online, pay the fee, 
What kind of performance um, do they have? Not much to be fair. But for Australia and New Zealand, it's very um, quite easy, actually. Okay. They, just, they just say, you have to pay 250 pounds. I'm not sure how much that is in American dollars. Okay. I think it's like $365. Oh, yeah. I do That's remember what, hearing If I recall like from the Australian one, so New Zealand might be similar. So, yeah, pay the fee. It's definitely for Australia, it's very easy. Pay the fee, have enough money, and then just go to the country. And I I didn't have enough money, but I got into the country with no checks. And I wouldn't recommend it, obviously. Yeah, yeah. So, it's not it's, it's, it's easy, but it didn't seem like there was any check or anything. For New Zealand, it was slightly harder because I've been in Thailand and Japan, there was risk of tuberculosis in their country. And I needed to have a chest x ray. So that was. So are you tuberculosis free? And, but it cost me 100, 100 pounds wow. to have the x ray. And then another 200 pounds to get the visa. Okay. So it's not cheap. Then, it's not cheap, but it. But for Japan, it was very cheap. Oh. That was different. I, I could do it online, but in a way it was more expensive because I had to fly back to the UK. Um, but I had to go to the embassy in London. I tried the embassy in Australia, but they said it needs to be in your own country. Oh. So I went back to the UK. You have to go visit yeah. people before you come here. Yeah. I had to get a job and save up again <laughs> and fly at the embassy there. And so Japan, you have to write. Uh, a whole letter of why you want to go to the country, and then another whole letter of your entire itinerary for the year. Wow. <laughs> and then pay a small fee of £25 for the visa. Hmm. Were you allowed to like adjust your plan after? Oh, yeah. Okay. We've completed another. No Just like a, use your imagination and fill in this itinerary. I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to go to this. And I'll get here. King of Japan. <laughs> you probably don't want to write that. I don't think they'd, they'd like that so much. <laughs> but they, they read through it and say, okay, yeah, he's interested in Japan. Yeah. Cool. So I think you were on your way to Japan when, when we, we when we met. Yeah. Yeah. You just come from England. Or maybe you had been in Ireland before? Hard to tell. Maybe. I think you had just become from working for a little while in England, and then you were heading eventually to Japan after. I think Thailand like every year now for the last three years. We do the same thing. We haven't. We've been in Thailand in 2018, 2017, 18, and 19 now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And 2016. There you go. Four years strong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I must have just. It's hard Saving to get up. all those trips straight. So I must have, I think I didn't get Ireland, you know, this is like another two dollars. And then, yeah, I was in my way to town. Wow. And then, what did we do? We, uh, we um, visited a little, a little bit. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't hear what you said. Do you remember the, uh, the cannabis museum? Oh, yes. The little planet? It was like an art installation, right, in Bangkok. So we went yeah. to we went to that cafe. We got first of all, okay. What happened was we ate ate lunch, and then we got horribly horribly rained on. The rain started coming. We had to take shelter. We found a cafe, hung out there for a little while, and then we popped into this random art gallery next door. Mm -hmm. And what they had in there were like microscopic was, yeah. photographs of weed and like they looked like planets it was so cool yeah i loved that and they were all different colors i don't know why they were all those different colors wasn't it different i thought it was different drugs or was it all weed like i thought it was like weed and then acid i remember she was saying it was, um, it was, uh, I, I don't remember either but that was that was a really cool exhibit. You, oh, I just there were there was a couple of clips of that in your video from that uh, from Bangkok. Yeah, that was so cool. 
and uh, yeah, that that trip to that trip to Bangkok was funny for us too. We never we never really spend all that much time in, in Bangkok. Bangkok. Usually so it's like just a like passing, a few days. Yeah, passing through kind of place. Mm -hmm. Have you ever spent like an extended time there? The longest I spent was uh, just over a week. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Same with us. The smell and the yeah. Like, yeah, it's exhausting, I think. Like, Bangkok is not a an easy no. few days. <laughs> like, it's just it's constant. Yeah, um, yeah, actually, the last year when we went back there, we spent maybe spent almost two weeks. It was great, though. We, we were hopping around through different Airbnbs, and um, we got messed around quite a lot by some people. You got messed around yeah. with some, from some people? Yeah, I've heard a little bit of a story. We were in one place and we, we said, okay, this is nice. We can in, we can put her into, let's, uh, let's extend. We extended, and the guy said, oh, that place is not available after your, your period, so we need to move you to another place. Come to our office for a day and just chill out there, then we'll move you. We went to the office, we chill out for a bit, and they said, oh, put yourself into this room for, to this evening, and then we'll move you this evening. Then this evening, tell them, oh, actually, it's going to be tomorrow morning now. Um, just stay in that room for tonight. You know, just a really cheap little room in their office. Whatever, we'll stay there. Tomorrow morning comes, the same happens again. We take all our bags, pack everything, bring it down, we're ready to go. Oh, it's not going to be until 6 o'clock this evening. I'm joking, okay. Top of the room, and then we just mess around like, a little bit of shopping and stuff. Huh. And then the season comes and it happens again like, uh, tomorrow morning. We pay for this pay for the kitchen. We're just in a tiny room at the moment. We have all this food. We yeah. have food and stuff and everything's just, just gone now. And all our food's worth it. And so the next day we went down and they said, okay, so it'll be definitely six foot this evening, definitely. Mm -hmm. Right, that's it, we're going out. So we left and we went went next to the uh you know the, the green line area, Sun Top? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the it's like a giant park with lots mm -hmm. of trees and stuff. I don't know. I remember how to make it. Yeah, so we went and explored there and then we came back at about seven o'clock and said, like, Well, it's okay because it's just gonna be tomorrow morning anyway. So we went into our room, went into the hot into the office. And the guys were like, yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to leave now, we're going to leave now. Okay, I'm just going to get my stuff from the room, whatever. Walked up there, and I opened the door. Now as I push open the door, I see two guys like, on the bed, naked, and they look at me. <laughs> this quilt goes over <laughs> And I just kind of was in shock. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> <Okay. Um, laughs> on, on my bed. <laughs> and then, then the lady came running out me. No, 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 it's not your room anymore. Whoa. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that, Whoa, was that is a huge surprise. Yeah, the worst part was that all of our stuff, like passports, the laptops, the drone, everything, we just spread it out on the bed. If we didn't think someone was going to come into our room and move all our shit. But yeah, they put it all in a big bag and dragged it downstairs. So. Whoa. That's so crazy. In through all of our stuff, it was just money, everything was on the bed. They came and moved it all and they, then put it someplace else. Yeah. That's crazy. Do you, do you want to tell us the name of that, of that place? <laughs> so <we don't laughs> that. Yeah. It, was out, it was out of the city, like about 30 minutes out of the city. I see, I see. Yeah, that's great. We did leave a long review on yeah, there. The experiences. Oh my God. <laughs> did you book it on Airbnb or was it a... Uh, Airbnb. Whew. They were like, we'll give you a refund for those two nights. Two nights that you stayed in the, the office and the refund never came. <laughs> Classic Thailand. Oh, so they just ran you around for that That's money. That's rough. That's so ridiculous. Oh. But it's quite funny to look back at it now and I just yeah. remember I was just staring and not really knowing what I was doing. Like, why am I just not closing the door? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you just standing there in pure shock of the moment? Like, 
why is this happening in the room where all my stuff is? It's supposed to be. So they're thinking exactly the same, like, why is this happening? Why is a random man just opening the door? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. So uh, this is a really crazy segue, but uh, I want to know about the different kinds of jobs that you have worked in different countries. Okay. Um, so Australia, I guess I'll start there. What do I do in Australia? Why is it in um, I work as just a general maintenance guy on a resort for a few months. I did the traffic. Hold on. I can't hear you. Okay, so you said in Australia. You said did in, in, in Australia you did general maintenance. At what kind of a place? And that was at like a kind of place. It was just a pet kind of thing. Okay. Work for um, then I did a three month farm to get the second year. Um, that's the usual that's like you actually. have to do time on a farm in order to do like a second year, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, can you guys hear me? Have we? Sorry, have we been to what? <laughs> I don't know which. What is I'm that? Still using my Wi-Fi spot. Oh, oh, I see. I see. Are you having? Are you having a problem with your connection? No, it's just very. <laughs> it's a uh, uh, version of Wi-Fi, like I did the company, so mm -hmm. the, uh, uh -huh. I to make videos, I thought an advert in my videos, but I only get one gigabyte a day, and it's just on past the gigabyte, so now it's slow. Oh, I see, I see. Oh, Life that's of a nomad. Interesting. So that's the... That's the way that you connect to the internet. Is it works in every country? Um, they well, they sent me a Southeast Asia one while I was there, and now they sent me one just for Zoom. Very interesting. So you get one gigabyte a day, which is pretty good, but it seems to go so quickly. Yeah, I can see how that would happen, especially if you're doing stuff like this, like video calling and stuff, yeah. or if you're like uploading a video or something, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. But it just it just slows down your speed after one gig. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm past one gig right now and you're still able to communicate with the best. Yeah, yeah <laughs> so and it's fine. It's it's doing just fine. Huh. Well that's not bad. So how much how much do those things cost like if you go to buy one in the store? Um, oh, online, yeah. Um I think it's uh, it's US dollars. I think it's about thirty, forty dollars a month. Oh, oh, it's monthly. You pay a monthly subscription for it. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you have to pay. For, you probably have to buy the device. You have to rent the device. You have to send it back to them. Oh, it's a rental. Oh, it's a rental thing. I see. Yeah. And do you, are you working with that company? Yeah, yeah. I, I put an advert at the beginning of. My videos like once a month. Cool. And they and they give you the service for free, like one gigabyte a day. That's a pretty cool deal. Yeah. Have you worked out other kinds of arrangements with other brands like that on your uh, channel before? Um, I did a small like product review of a like, video stabilization uh, software. It was like it was for. Um, GoPro, if you, you turn off the stabilization on the GoPro and get the original footage, it turns it into a it actually looks like it's on the video. Wow. That's cool. That's really cool. I thought, check out the link, like, check it out. Nice. I, did they send, did somebody send you a camera? No, 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 no. That would be nice. <laughs> I, I 
that would, <laughs> that would be nice. I totally agree. <laughs> I would love for someone to send me a camera. <laughs> yeah, for real. Basically, how is your camera? Have you upgraded to a slightly less heavy camera yet? No, no, of course not. <laughs> I did upgrade the lenses though. I got like some lighter lenses and fixed lenses. So they're like, I still have three, but instead of a long telephoto and then a like regular one, and then I don't remember what the other one I had was wide. Ultra angle. wide, yeah. Now I have like a 50 millimeter, um, a 25, and then like the regular 35 zoom. So it's a little It's more. lightened my load a little bit. But I think oh, we do a lot of our shooting now with like our phone. Yeah, we got a new phone that does like amazing uh, camera stuff. It's the Samsung, Samsung Galaxy S10 and it's or S10 Plus, and it's it's good. It's all it's like we vlog with it. We do everything with it. Yeah. So yeah, the classic saying: the best camera is the one that you have on your phone. Right. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. a good point. But I still love the colors and like the crispness of my camera. So I, I'm i not like ready to, I'm not ready our, to get rid of it. <laughs> for our guides and stuff, we still shoot a lot with the camera. We'll go yeah. out and do a lot of street shooting and that stuff with the camera. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. I really, I want to say I really love your videos and the style that you do with the way it's, I feel like I'm very immersed in your videos like right? we're right there yeah. yeah like we're right there with you the whole time like every every single one it's a it's a little different with the drone footage the drone i don't want to say it like takes you out but it, i mean it does it pulls you out of the like the in-person perspective but it adds a, a whole nother level to your mm -hmm. footage but I, I mean i love your videos i think they're great i try to um i try to make it seem as if like you're the one stabbing through the lens, rather than yeah. talking to the camera. I try to speak that to and I'm just not good at it. I'm just, uh, <laughs> well, I think you're doing great. I, I really enjoy watching them. And I, I love the music choices that you pick. I, mm -hmm. I find that the music in your videos is always really different than like the cookie cutter vlog music I hear in a lot of other ones. Mm -hmm. And also, I would say, like, the way that you interact with the camera is really interesting to watch. Like, yeah. the way that you, like, you, we're there with you. Like, you feel like we're, like, you're talking to us or, like, you're making faces at us or, like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's just, it, you feel very part of it and, like, we're with you. I like that. Way. that. But the, by the way that you, like, interact with the video <laughs> camera. So if that's your goal, then you're doing it right. High five. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> we, started, we started talking about your job that you work uh, in different countries. I want to hear a little bit about your experience in Japan in up on that mountain resort. How did you find that job in the first place? That was that was pure luck. That was um I was just uh couch surfing with some people and they mentioned one of their friends who worked in and I guess because they told me he looks like he would enjoy living in the mountains. <laughs> uh, you might enjoy this job, but I'll keep you in touch with my friends. And it was as simple as that. I just said, yeah, I would like to do it. They said, okay, you start on this day. Get to this town by this day. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so I, I managed to... You speak uh, Japanese, right? Um, Chukka. So you speak a little now. Did you speak a little at that time? <laughs> I don't know what that means. I can speak a little Japanese. Can you go beyond that? Uh, I mean, I'm at a stage now where I can do a conversation, pick out maybe what the conversation is about. Okay. okay. I'm getting words here and there. But yeah, at that point when I went to the mountain, I still pretty bad. Yeah. Um, but it was a uh, mountain resort with about eight members of staff who were all Japanese and only about two of them could speak English. And the rest of them could speak basic English. 
Okay. How long did you end up spending there? How long? Yeah. yeah. Um, two months. Two months. Okay. So what was that experience like? Was it very isolating for you? Did you meet a lot of people and connect with a lot of people or? The guys in English, I kind of clung to talk to me and talk to someone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was quite isolating just in general. Maybe it was like two layers of isolation, I guess. Because one, you're away from everything, and two, I couldn't interact with most of the people. And about 95% of the customers were Japanese as well. Right. <laughs> So they, there wasn't anyone there that could provide you with anybody to talk with either. What was your job there? Um, I was just kind of in the kitchen, like doing things, preparing the dishes, doing a bit of washing up, making, like everyone did the same job. You were either making breakfast or you were making all the bed. You were making dinner. It was every single day. Wow. And it sits up top. Is there anything else around the resort, or is it just? Nope, just right on the summit. Wow. It was like ten minutes, ten minute walk from the summit. Okay. That's, That's incredible. Crazy. What about the Wi-Fi? <laughs> <laughs> no, I. I mean, I had these guys giving me Wi-Fi, but um. The device didn't work very well for the first few months, and then they sent me a new one via helicopter. The mail got to the helicopter every two weeks, so I, I got them to send me a new device, which yeah. connects very slightly, and I could just about do a few things in mind, but yeah. Wow. Most of the time, the mail was without internet, just... Uh, I I spent a lot of time making the video there, perfecting the video. Okay. And doing lots of stock footage. Making stock footage. Mm -hmm. So you're shooting is that a thing that you're doing now? You're shooting stock footage? I mean I will. Yeah, I think it was after meeting you guys that I really got onto that because mm -hmm. you were on I am. I am, yeah. I am. Is that working for you? Not really. I made one sale, one picture for forty dollars. Okay. Just one? Oh my God. But then I, I've kind of gone on to, I'm on Getty Images now, putting all my video on there, and Shutterstock and Bond 5, if you it. Um, so I've, I've been trying to get all of my video as much as I can. And it's, it's okay, it's not enough to really live on at all, but it's like pocket money. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's pretty cool. It's it, like to think at least like one day a month. That's pretty nice. Buy yourself a beer. Yeah. It's half the thing so. Yeah. I'm still making money just on like three of my photos that are on IM. And then, but like occasionally, and I just recently went back to check it. And but it it's was the like, same one that you keep selling over yeah. and over again. I even added more and nothing came of it. So I don't know. It's just I, like. I just had a look on there a while back and had a look at your profile to see if you've been adding more. But I, I think I remember the ones you were telling me that it was a weed or something. Was it? Yeah, yeah they're the cannabis <laughs> photos of like the grow. So it's just like clearly this is what's needed. It's but... niche. It's niche. <laughs> photography. I'd love to shoot more, but I need more. Subjects. <laughs> yeah, you need to get more weed farms. <laughs> Come talk to us. Yeah, yeah. So you met you met your girlfriend when you were in Japan. Oh. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Yeah, we met um in. She has to go to work. <laughs> Yeah, we, we met in um, Tokyo just through couch surfing. Oh, cool. cool. And that was before you went up the mountain? Yeah, yeah, just before. That's cool. And so you guys are traveling together for how long? Uh, one year. Wow, that's cool. 
<laughs> and so do you both have the working holiday visas in New Zealand now? Yeah. And what we had enough in Tokyo, a flat paid for by the company. Wow. <laughs> and I persuaded her to leave it all and go traveling. Oh, wow. that's great. That's a great story. <laughs> <laughs> so now, what is your job in New Zealand? Are you working at the same place? Yes. Well, I'm uh, working at the Mm-hmm. And, and I'm thinking. What? Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. You're doing what? I'm thinking. Oh, painting. <laughs> yeah. Cool. yeah, it's pretty, pretty nice. So, is that a temporary gig, or do you? Yeah, it's just a few months' work, restoring the hospital, painting the windows, and then there's a there's potentially more work after this, but. I think we want to go explore while it's summer. We want to see the South Island. So which part of New Zealand are you in now? <laughs> um, we are in uh, the Bay of Plenty. Is that in the North Island or the South Island? North Island. Okay. North. Cool. Right up the A few hours from Oakland. Okay. And what do you do for fun around there? Um, when? <laughs> well, to, to be fair, we've um we've gone into have this permit mode where we just are trying to save as much money as possible for the last you know, at least the last month. Like, we, we, we're leaving the job in a, a month time now, so we, we uh, oh super savoring mode. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I totally. We, we did a we did a skydive like, a month or two ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so um, it was Ben Potter's first that I must have been now. Nice. Uh, we, we still, every time that conversation comes up, are you okay? Can you hear us? Yeah, I was saying, have you done one yet? We have not. We have not. This conversation comes up all the time. And I always say the same thing. My life is very thrilling. I don't need to <laughs> jump out of an airplane to make it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely starting to feel addicted to it now. Oh, yeah? That happens yeah, to people. I, I don't know if I told you about the first time when I did it. I, um, I passed out. <laughs> oh, my God. But it was because the too tight. But this time, it was, it was really good. And I was like, oh, okay. It's nothing to do with me, then. It was to do with that. Uh -huh. The last time, it, it was so tight. And as soon as the parachutes were pulled, my uh, my face started going really pale, and you can see it in the video. It's like, oh, wow. <laughs> and the guy, <laughs> the guy's like, "Okay, we're going down as quick as possible. Just try and stay with me." <laughs> okay, I'm trying to. Like you know, I don't, I don't know if you've ever felt that, but it's on the verge of passing out, and I'm like, "Gotta stay awake, <laughs> not stay with it." And then we landed on the beach, and as soon as we landed, like all the the pressure just got released. And the blood went oh, back to my head, and I stood up, and then fell over. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I, I couldn't remember it at all. I got up after that, and was just chatting away like, oh, it's so cool, isn't it? And then my girlfriend at the time, do you remember passing out? No, nah, I've never passed out in my life. What are you talking about? How <laughs> <laughs> can I not remember that? There's the way to adjust the strap in the air, like loosen them slightly, or... No, the guy was like, he put his feet out straight, and he was like, stand on my feet and lift the pressure off. And then, so uh -huh. I was trying to do that a bit, but it, it wasn't enough. It, it kept me with it, but it wasn't enough. Yeah. yeah. I've been like on the verge of passing out and passed out, like at least twice in the past year, and yeah. once was from smoking a joint in California. <laughs> like. We just we decided to, we got some weed and then we were smoking with a friend of ours sitting in the backyard. Of we the smoked Airbnb. a pre-roll from the dispensary. Oh, that's what it was. And <laughs> I just I did that thing where it's like you think you're gonna pass out, but you're She's not like, sure. I, think I, I'm need like, I need some water. And Adam went to go get water, and it was just gone by the time he got back. <laughs> I thought 
writing is only for people who haven't smoked in a while or haven't smoked ever. <laughs> It, it was, we hadn't talked very much in a while. We had been, we'd been in Mexico, right? Yeah, so we were smoking just fine, but the California weed was so much stronger than anything we'd been smoking in Mexico, yeah, so. Yeah, way stronger. When you smoke a big fat joint of it like that. <laughs> that California weed, no joke. <laughs> I, I had a little bit in, um, actually in New Zealand when I got here, because in Japan, it doesn't really exist. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure you did it, but I didn't. I didn't touch it. Like... I'm sure it's possible, though, but yeah, when we got to New Zealand, within oh, actually, yeah, yeah, within a week of being in the country, it was like wow, what a change. Yeah. We um, we we hitchhiked from Auckland to the Bay of Plenty. It was about a four-hour drive, mm -hmm. and the first mm -hmm. ride we got was with an old guy, kind of eccentric old guy um he, he took about an hour to take us 20 minutes down the road by visiting local towns and taking us to a shop so yeah so this guy like took us to everywhere he could find he's like you've got to try this you've got to do this try this blah 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 eventually took us to the motorway and dropped us off on the side of the motorway a pullover and just as we were getting out the car he was like I, I'd offer you guys a smoke, but you probably don't smoke, do you? Yeah? Uh. <laughs> hop back in, hop back in. Like, uh, I've still got three hours of hitchhiking today. We're on the side of a motorway. Like, I, think, <laughs> yeah, I think I'll pass me. Like, okay, just take this, take this. Gave me a little, a little bug. Like, oh, that's so <laughs> nice. <laughs> but that, that probably wouldn't have been too good, though. Trying to hitchhike. In the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Right. And then you're stuck in the middle of nowhere. Over a year. <laughs> Even for later. Yeah. That you made the right move. like a good choice. Yeah. I bet it was so good when you finally got to it, though. Yeah, well, when we when we got to the place we were staying, there were some guys, it was a shared house, and they, I walked past their bedroom door, and I was like, nah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's perfect. Um, perfect. Yeah. Uh, so they invited me down into the into the van and we had a little strong a little smoke. Okay, so just take it take it easy in a while, go straight into a bong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a nice welcome back. <laughs> yeah, <that was> pretty good. <laughs> I can totally relate to the thing with Japan because when we were in Korea for a whole year there was no weed for an entire year, and it almost killed me. <laughs> Except for that one time our friend brought fake weed. And That's, that that doesn't count, yeah, that doesn't count. But it's depressing. I was having dreams about like going to my weed guy to buy weed, which is so weird, it's like a random thing to dream about, and then it would be like in my pocket in the dream, but I would never smoke. And I would wake up and be angry with my my dreams. <laughs> oh, I had the chance. <laughs> or you check your pocket to see if it was like some kind of weird magical dream. Absolutely, <laughs> every time, every time. But yeah, after we came back from Korea, it was. I think we ramped it up to the next level. Yeah, I was not a weed smoker, like a heavy weed smoker, until we got back from Korea. I think I needed like the. Therapy. Therapy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and now it's like, now it feels like an important part of our lives now, even though we can't have it everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. We're in a place where it's, you know, plentiful available. and available. It's going to be around. I was mentioning about the, the brownies I made yesterday. I think I, I think I stuck it. I think I need to change the recipe. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> I read online because I thought maybe I'll try doing it properly. And everyone was saying make kind of butter. Uh huh. I just chopped it up and chucked it in with the mix. You can do that too. Yeah. Can of butter is like a refined way of doing it, I think. Yeah. Well, there was a lot of butter and it was only a small bag. So it wasn't very strong. I think and I got like it. Yeah. I felt a little bit relaxed. That's about it. I find, okay, so 
conversation that we go back to relates to, it's called decarboxylation or decarboxylation. Decarbing. Decarbing your weed. You're supposed to apparently like heat up and activate your weed before you put it into your brownies or like before you put it into the butter. But we've made it both ways with potent effects. But I think that if you heat up your weed like in the oven ahead of time before you put it into the butter, you'll get a better result. Yeah, like grind it up and then like lay it out flat on like a cookie sheet or something and then put it in the oven for a little while. It's supposed to change Whoa. the THC into like the active form that your body can ingest. Okay. And then you add it to the recipe. Yeah. I, I kind of warming up. I, I melted the butter in a pan and put all the weed in there and like kind of fried it. <laughs> yeah, I've done that too. The longer you simmer the weed in the butter for too, the better it gets. Mm. I wasn't sure if I was going to lose stuff into the air paper, so I just tried to do it so it was melted butter and at least warm it a bit and then chuck it into it. Nice. That's just for like getting extra baked while you're baking. Yeah. <laughs> That's like a good thing. You breathe it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, but in Mexico here, we have no problem finding either finding weed or smoking it because it's, it's decriminalized here so it's just it's really not a big deal it's like i think you can carry up to five grams personal amount be just fine i think you might be able to get a ticket for it but they can't throw you in. yep so i'm gonna tell them about the oh we did get shook down at, the, at a music festival recently so. in mexico city this is crazy. I got caught with a bunch of I mean, if I, was, if I was stood there, a dog, I would probably pick you up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just look at me. <laughs> it's like, so usually I don't travel anything for that specific reason, right? But we were going to festival. So it was like, I got some stuff in the city and then we rolled it up ahead of time and brought it to concert. This was in Mexico City. And they had police dogs. First of all, they had police dogs at the entrance. And then but they not had the, the first day. And they had the most extensive bag check I've ever seen. And then, so on the second day, the first day they didn't find anything. On the second day, they did find my okay. pre rolled dogs. Wait, wait, no. On the first day, they pulled out a pack of pencils, like colored pencils. And they were like, you can't bring these in here. You can't bring any pens or pencils into this. I'm like, these are colored pencils. And Adam's like arguing with the guy, like, these are expensive, they're for my job. I'm like, he's an illustrator, he's an illustrator. Which is bullshit. <laughs> She's the one who uses the pencil. <laughs> but then but, the guy was like, okay, I can either get rid of them or you can bring them over to this place where they'll store dangerous items during the concert and you can pick it up later. And we're like, okay. So we walked us over and hands them to this girl and she's gonna like tag them and then she waits for the guy to walk away and like hands us back our pencils and sends us on our way so we weren't expecting like the second day to have such an issue like we had a our huge fact check was fine the second day of the search was very thorough yeah and they found the pearl joint stashed in the bag yeah those colored pencils. It wasn't, so there was no, there was no glove. They did, they did have us take off, go behind a curtain and take off our gloves so we could see if we had any on our body. It's crazy, mm -hmm. crazy. But afterwards, they just took the weed and let us go to the concert, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah. It could have been a lot worse. I think, it really could have been worse. So we did have to get naked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is how it goes. <laughs> the other thing was that, so Adam, they pegged Adam and they started asking me like, do you know this guy? Is he, are you together? And I tried to say like, no, I don't know him. Never seen him before. Never seen him before. Never seen him before. <laughs> but quickly realized like, he's wearing a banana shirt and I'm wearing a banana hat and it's clearly my <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> like, there's no way I'm going to get away with saying I don't know him. So they pulled her in, too. <laughs> Is that your banana? The drug. <laughs> Did you get the banana shirt from Vietnam? Yeah. <laughs> I don't we have, have that hats. much. We have hats, and he has a shirt, and pants, and I have a dress. <laughs> we don't have I, I, clothes, so they end up coming out like all the time now. <laughs> like, I wear those banana sh that banana shirt and banana hat all the time. I didn't end up getting any banana attire while I was in Vienna, but I, I did enjoy seeing all the couples dressed up like completely <laughs> matching bananas. We felt pretty silly about it for a long time, but then one day uh, we were going to Hoi An for like the have you ever been there? Vietnam? Not to Hoi Nam. I went to Vietnam last this year. Well, Hoi Nam is like this little ancient town. It's very, very touristy. We've been there a bunch of times. We don't really like the town that much. But they it's do beautiful. have... It's beautiful. It, it's beautiful, but it's, it's just poor to, touristy. Poor to tourists. And so, but we go there because they have a noodle dish that we really love, and it's the only place to get it. So we decided to make it more fun for us by dressing up in the full banana suits for the day. And it, and it worked. It made the day so much better. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why. People kept coming up to us, like, talking to us about the bananas. We kept finding other people with banana clothes on and, like, taking selfies with them. And it added a le another level to the day. But it's fun. We get amazing reactions people when you wear that stuff though. I guess when you're in Vietnam and you see it like every day it loses some of its magic. But out in the wild bananas are it's a good choice. Yeah. Have you ever been to a music festival uh like in another country before in your travels? They um yes I'm in all the uh festivals in New Zealand. I was uh in the run up to the New Year. So oh. they start on the stage. And then the last night of the festival is New Year's Eve. Oh, wow. So, it's pretty cool. It's been a long time since I've been to New Year's Is there anybody that you know playing there, or are you just seeing some local stuff? Or I, It's not local stuff, but I feel like I'm getting older. It's not, like well, it's not bands. It's, it's more of like a dance DJ kind of yeah. thing. I put my phone on front. Ah, oh, I can't show you here. So this is mostly like dance and drum and bass and stuff, which is it's all right. It's not too bad. Um, I prefer if there was at least something I mean. But um, there's one band that is all dance and drum and bass, and then one jazz band. Oh, cool! That actually looks. That sounds pretty good. Awesome. Fat Freddy's Drop. Fat Freddy's Drop. What? Really? Oh my God! <laughs> okay, so jealous. They're, right they're now. kind of a big deal. They're you should listen to them. They're, they're like kind of they're headlining. I think. Yeah, yeah, that would uh, make sense. Yeah, they're great. Never heard of them before. Oh well, you're gonna have they're you're gonna have amazing. a good time listening to them. Yeah. It's kind of jazz, I guess. I'm not, yeah, I that's like reggae to... jazz. We'll send you a very link. Very vibey music. It's cool. It's really cool. I feel like it's gonna be good for sitting outside. Festival. Yeah, yeah, and they have a lot of different instruments too. Like there's saxophones and stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really, it's really like. Really awesome. Oh, you're gonna like them a lot. That's good. Well, that's in just under four weeks. Cool. What are you doing? You want to go to New Zealand? For this <laughs> I don't think we're gonna make it. I don't think we're gonna make it. I don't think so either. But it would be so cool. I'd love to see them. So what do you? What kind of music do you normally listen to? What's your? You have a lot of cool stuff in your videos. So what's what's your normal go-to stuff that you listen to? I'm kind of rock, psychedelic rock. Um, I mean, I've got a soft spot for a bit of drum and bass and uh -huh. now and then. But that from my days when I used to be a boy racer in my car. Okay. <laughs> when I, when we got this new car, I um. Just installed a new uh, radio in it, uh -huh. and the first thing I did was test the speakers with someone from Zoom. That's good. Yeah, it's so funny again now. It's so good, really. Yeah, yeah, great stuff. 
anyway, so we should probably start wrapping this up. We it's been really great talking to you, man. We we always uh we always have a, a feel like uh common interests let's just say yes. we tend to we tend to view the world through a similar perspective i think i think so yeah 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 so it's been really cool chatting with you i think everybody should definitely check out your videos where do you post those on youtube on youtube no matter how far, no matter how far. and then you have a website also right no matter how far no matter how far <laughs> and so you blog you the website is primarily blogs right yeah, I mean, to be honest, the website's taken a bit in the backseat recently. Video, I kind of focus on. Do you still, do you still sell uh, photo prints on there? Oh yeah, yeah, I, I, they're available. They're available <laughs> all the time, always available. Well, people yeah. should definitely check them out because you have cool photos too. Mm. <laughs> anyway, uh, and then from, did you have anything else you wanted to talk about? Uh, I'm absolutely the worst at selling my best. Oh, no worries. No <laughs> worries. You don't have to sell anything here. Yeah. <laughs> For us, I, what, do we, what do we have going on right now? Anything interesting? Um, well, we're recording this podcast. New so podcast. This uh, is reboot. like a revamp. and Reboot. Reboot. Sorry. <laughs> and um, when was the last time you did a podcast? A while ago. Maybe like last Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's almost really? a year yeah probably <laughs> right around a year ago yeah uh but we just haven't found the right inspiration recently it's it, you know talking just between the two of us even when we're recording it for a podcast it still feels like we're just having a conversation about stuff that we already talked about together right right so having opening up this format with another person allows us to share things a little more organically i think mm -hmm. So we'll see how it goes. It should be pretty good. I'm excited about it. Yeah. So we have this. We just published a brand new guide not even 10 minutes before we started this call to Valladolid, Mexico, which is like a very small town that we're living in right now. Very. Yeah. We weren't even sure if we wanted to write a guide for it because it's so small, but and but it's very special place that we want to share yeah. with people. Yeah, so. I think that people should come here, but like spend a week. And if it yeah. really feels like the place for you, then stay longer. Like we got sucked in and like- We, we ended up spending like, this is our fourth month here. Mm -hmm. So not in, not consecutively. We spent three months here and then we're, we're back now. Yeah. But yeah, Via to Lead. So yeah. check out our Via to Lead or our digital nomad guide to Via to Lead Mexico on our website, localnomads.com. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find us on social media, on Instagram, local underscore nomads and facebook is facebook.com slash local nomads with no spaces or anything funny like that and taryn what's your like and you guys you have instagram and facebook too right yeah i mainly post on instagram now mainly on instagram that's just, and that's also no matter how far any specials wait can you spell nomad. it like nomad then with er then how far cool <laughs> perfect no that way people can find you how far <laughs> Perfect. Excellent. Taryn, it's been so good to see you. Like, yeah. we miss you so much. We're always like keeping an eye out for yeah, what you're Yeah, we always doing. keep tabs on where you're at. And we really super appreciated that you were like sending us messages from the mountain from in the Tokyo. From the top of the mountain. In, that's in Japan. That like, tiny bit of Wi Fi. Like, <laughs> every once in a while, I'd be like, I have to check on Taryn and make sure he's still alive up there. <laughs> okay, the mountain. Yeah. <laughs> So we really yeah, appreciate like, that. Isolation. Yeah. 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 And then hopefully we'll have some sexy drone footage for you to look at before too long. Anyway, so it's been a fantastic time talking to you. This has been a really great podcast. Probably one of our best episodes ever, I'd say. Probably. And, uh, I'd say the best of the last year. For sure the best of 2019. I can't, oh, yeah. I can't stress that enough. <laughs> It's been great talking to you, Taryn. Everyone should go watch your videos, check out your Instagram, and uh, and yeah, we'll catch up with you later. Yeah, we'll we should you. do this again soon. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Part two. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. See you next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.